Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Vivi Sofia. I'm a senior data scientist at Udemy. Today, I'm going to present you a framework that we developed for probabilistic tag modeling to improve course recommendations. Uh, let me start briefly with the motivations behind this framework. Uh, understanding user preferences lies at the heart of any recommender system. Uh, typical methods employ uh, user feedback data and use it in a collective sense to identify similar users, similar items, in the case of, for, for example, courses. Uh, but in the kind of context of education, uh, providing context matters. And uh, what we realize using Udemy's data is that, for example, a context can be a topic. And um, our users tend to go very deep in, one, uh, in a topic of, of their interest or visit adjacent topics to gain a broader skill set. So in that context, uh, in this case, context ended up being topic, but you can imagine uh, coming up with different contexts Then putting our recommendations in this context made our recommend recommendations very powerful at uh, Coming up with context is not a trivial task. It requires discovering features that represent the course and understanding what makes two courses similar or what makes them different. Um, with that, I will now walk you through the methodology and uh, and then go to Udemy's case and give you some example use cases that we employed. Probabilistic tag modeling uh, is a statistical framework for automatically generating tags and mapping them to our course catalog and to our user base. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end framework and uh, it systematically tags, as I said, courses and users and we hope that the tags that we come up with describe some latent course features that can be used in other applications as well, for, for example, categorization or marketing and so on. And it's a, a modular framework, and we, we are currently actually working on improving some of the steps, which I will uh, briefly walk you over in the future work. Here is the framework in a nutshell. Uh, the first step is coming up with a list of tags uh, that will be used in the rest of the framework. Here, it, for today's presentation, I'm going to be focusing on topic tags and how we determine them using our internal search data. Uh, using this candidate list of tags, we then map them to our courses and to our users. Uh, the output of the second and the third step uh, can be used with a ranking engine uh, and the, the tags that you come up with can be combined with other features that what might be relevant for your personalization. Uh, for example, like if the tags that you're interested in are topic, maybe in the ranking step you might want to inc incorporate instructor characteristics, users, user characteristics or user course interaction data that you might have. And after this step, you end up having a list of courses that will be personalized for your users. Uh, now I will revisit every step one by one. I'll start with the tag generation step. Uh, as I said, today's presentation is going to focus on topic tags. And uh, for this example, we are using our, uh, our internal search data dating back to 2015. And uh, what we did is, was basically we created a search query graph. And here, in this undirected graph, the nodes are search queries themselves, and some of the nodes are connected uh, with, with some weights. And the way we de de determine those weights are, again, using our search log data. We go to our historical data and check for given two queries, how many people en enrolled in the same course, how many people clicked on the same course through our search engine. And um, here is just a subgraph. Um, from the big graph that we have. Uh, and in the next step, we apply some clustering to this graph. The reason for that is um, you can imagine using search queries as tags themselves, but they are very noisy. So in order to eliminate that noise, we employ some clustering and identify uh, the groups of queries that are in high level have the same meaning. So for example, here we have a quick, like, list of queries that are put in the same cluster. And in the final step, we apply, employ some link analysis methods to name each cluster that we have. And here, for example, the page rank analysis uh, defined Java to be the most connected node in this, this cluster. And we uh, end up having Java to be one of our tags. And 
uh, when this step is completed, now you have a list of tags that you can use for uh, the remaining of the program. The second step what to, uh, is to model the courses with the tag that we come up with. And uh, for that, uh, the thing we are employing a law of total probability. And what we do is that for a given course uh, and for a tag of it, that we determine the of interest, what we do is we basically go back to our search block data and check uh, the enrollments and clicks to the given course with any query that we have and weight that uh, with uh, the query's relationship with the tag. And this term is determined from our graph from the previous step. And we sum it over all query, all search queries, which give us this uh, blue term, which represents course tag profiles. Um, Course tag profiles and are themselves very useful. Uh, they kind of give you a ranking of uh, the topics each a, co a course covers. So you can identify what's the main topic, what are the top topics that are covered in the course, and so on. Uh, for the final step, user tag modeling, we again follow a sim similar recipe. Uh, we this time ha use our internal uh, course model which predicts a user's interest into a given course. And we weight that with that, with that course's relationship with the tag that we have. And uh, we sum it over all, the, all courses in our marketplace to come up with user tag profiles. And you can, uh, user tag profiles, you can imagine like helping us to understand in terms of topics, what are, the simil what are our users that, are similar, that have similar interests? Uh, we can group them, we can basically use those as a feature in our recommender model, and so on. Um, as I said, course tag profiles and user tag profiles, I tried to give you some example use cases of those. Here is another uh, use case that we found very useful, uh, is through uh, a similarity definition. So given two courses, uh, since we now know uh, the topic co coverage of each course, we can basically take a dot product of these two terms to understand, in terms of content, how the, the similarity between two courses that we have. Um, now I want to transition to Udemy's case. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Udemy, uh, Udemy is a global online education marketplace. And we are a double-sided marketplace, and whatever our students do on our site directly impacts the content that we gather. So our uh, content library grows and evolves over time. Currently, we have 45,000 courses uh, in a variety of topics, ranging from yoga to photography to programming to self-healing, so on. Um, and uh, our recommendations are placed in our homepage, and we try to um, uh, pick uh, the courses that you will love and consume and learn at, uh, at the end of the day for you. Um, we apply this full framework to the courses that we have at Udemy's marketplace. And here's an example. This is a very popular course on Udemy about uh, web development. And these are the tags that we come up with through our search log data. Uh, we also blindly uh, come up with tags using some human editors for some of our courses, and we show we saw a close agreement with the tag that we come up with and the human editor tags. Um, currently, we use this framework to power uh, recommendations at Udemy uh, in a variety of modules. Uh, we A/B tested this uh, for about like five months. And uh, as you would recall, uh, the course similarity uh, that I showed you a couple slides ago, that is currently used to power our similar course recommendations module on the uh, landing page of the courses. So uh, we A-B tested that against a collaborative filtering algorithm that we had and uh, transitioning to a topic-based similarity gave us uh, revenue lift and engagement lift in the terms of video consumption. Um, which was very powerful. We also use that in the context of user action-based recommendation modules, um, and the course tag profile ended up being very useful there. Now, I would like to briefly go over how we are planning about uh, the future of this framework. Um, 
as I said at the beginning of this uh, talk, currently we are using search logs to come up with topic tags. But you can imagine using, uh, of course, metadata uh, to come up with a lot, list of topics. Courses have a lot of metadata available in terms of video content, as well as we also have uh, descriptions of the courses written by our instructors and so on. Currently, we are mining this data to enhance the tags that we come up from search logs, and we'll be following this full procedure. Um, topics are not the only tag that we are interested in. For example, instructor delivery uh, ended up being very important uh, from uh, the user calls that we had, and currently we are building a collaborative tagging system to uh, come up with uh, where our, we will be using our users, uh, students, as well as our instructors to uh, come, come up with tags and we will be following the full procedure to use them in our recommender system. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you and open the floor for any questions.